Hello, welcome again to Gear Junkers TV and a new video. Today we're going to take a look at the Fretslab Zekit. The Zekit is a small analog digital hybrid synthesizer and it is available ready made or as a kit. We got the kit version and in this video I will show you the parts, describe the assembly and review the end result. But first, you can stay informed about all our videos by subscribing to our channel. Just click the subscribe button below the video and you can hit the bell button to get notifications when there's something new on our channel. So today we're gonna check out the new Zekit by Fred's Lab, which is a, a, a kit of a mini uh, four voice synthesizer and it's all in this uh, little box. Um, for now, we're very curious what is actually inside here. So let's take a look. Okay. So, yeah, we have a little booklet about Fresh Lab. And here we have the various parts of the kit. So let's see. Um, okay, let's start with this, which is the enclosure. It's always nice to take a look at. So, here we go. This is the uh, front plate. And we have the back plate, including the sides. So apparently we have to fold this uh, later on to be able to uh, make a complete metal kit out of it. Here's one connector that I think fell out of one of these little sachets. What do we have here? So, oh, here we go. Here we have the CPU. Uh, some other dill parts and some, I think, film capacitors. Yeah, and some more here in this little sachet. So, just put this back for now. So, that's that. And then we have the printed circuit boards. So, here we go. As you can see, um, the SMD parts are already soldered on it, so we just need to um, install all the other components that are in this kit. Then we have another little bag of components here. Let's see what's in here. Okay, here we go. Ah, nice. These are the knobs and some uh, rubber pads to fit under the case. And these are the encoder knobs and some distance buses here and screw. Because you need to screw everything as well as holding. And then we have the last bag here. Let's see what that contains. And ah, here we go. Potentiometers and knobs. Here's a little. Yep. Little knob. Some connectors for uh, three and a half inch. Uh, three and a half millimeter and yeah so excited to solder this whole thing together so now we know uh, all the parts the zacket has to be built Fred's lab has made a very nice building manual where you can find the assembly instructions uh, step by step and in the proper order it also has tips on uh, how to solder, what tools to use and what to watch out for during the build. 
And finally, it contains a technical section where you can find details on how the different components of the Zacket work. So let's go to work. So here's the final result of the build of the Zacket. Luckily, no problems were found, mostly thanks to the excellent manual. Um, so let's go over the features of the Zacket. Being as small as it is, it has a lot to offer. The sound engine features uh, additive salted synthesis with eight mono waveforms and eight paraphonic waveforms, and they have a 250 kHz DAC sample rate. Then there's an analog voltage controlled 12 dB low pass and band pass filter with two resonance settings and an analog VCA. There are analog AD and AR envelopes, uh, filter tracking, fixed uh, glide mode, envelope looping and three triggering options. Then there is a built-in 96 step sequencer with uh, up to four notes per step and 16 programmable patterns. Uh, you can have live control over pitch transposition and trans uh, transition of the patterns and there are 16 motive sequences already built in. On the back it has a stereo jack output, MIDI in, external audio in and a clock signal input. And it works on a 5 to 9 volt power adapter. You can um, select waveforms with these four buttons representing a binary selector. So this is 1, 2, 4 and 8 and total 16 choices. The first eight waveforms are monophonic and the upper are paraphonic. So let's uh, listen to all of them. I press the wave button and start playing the first waveform. So I will go through the monophonic waveforms first. go to the paraphonic waveforms. The filter section um, has an uh, encoder for cutoff and there are two different filter types, low pass and bend pass. And instead of a dedicated resonance uh, pop meter, it has uh, two settings. Uh, it's set to chill or acid. And in the acid um, 
setting, it has uh, more of a resonance than it has in the chill setting. So let's just um, play something and listen to the filter. Then we have the envelope section here. It has an attack, decay, accent and release. And all uh, the accent um, just does something with the, the filter envelope. It sort of um, gives an extra uh, peak setting to that, similar to how, uh, for instance, a, a Roland TBT3 sounds. Um, let's just uh, choose another waveform here and play sequence and play it with the envelopes. We have two more buttons here. One is the option setting and uh, this gives you the information that's under the buttons here, glide, track, loop and retrick. And this has to do with uh, a fixed, uh, applying a fixed uh, glide to the, to the notes. You can um, set the filter tracking uh, of the envelope, um, a looping envelope and a retrigger. And finally, there's the motifs here and uh, they give you 16 uh, predefined motifs to, uh, to play around with. So we can try a few of those to see how they sound, or we'll just choose another uh, waveform to start with. Let's try a polyphonic one, go to motives, uh, start playing, choose different motives. There's the step sequencer and this can be um, uh, played from uh, MIDI. So I've uh, attached a MIDI keyboard that goes into the MIDI input here. And it's, uh, it works quite simple. You just uh, press um, the record button and 
now it, the current sequence is, um, is cleared and you can just uh, play some notes and press playback. Also, uh, with the two buttons over here, you can set a tie or, or a pause. So let's try that. Uh, let's play some notes. Put a tie here. Uh, sorry, that was a pause. Now put a tie. Let's try it. Let's try it again um, with uh, a different tie setting. Let's press record. You can also record polyphonic uh, notes, so like a chord. So I'll just put this punch in some chords with a break, uh, sorry, a pause between them. So you uh, can um, put in some notes via the MIDI keyboard while the sequence is playing uh, to uh, make it transpose. If you press the save button, you can uh, save the pattern. There can be uh, um, 16 patterns that you can save in here. So you can, uh, for instance, use them later when you do a live show. And uh, you can control the tempo of the sequence by uh, um, tapping here uh, if there is no MIDI clock present. Uh, or you can use the clock input, so that way uh, the um, Zekit can be used, for instance, uh, together with a modular synthesizer that provides a clock in. So, what do we think of the Zekit? First of all, I had a lot of fun building it. It's not difficult, and the excellent uh, manual explains the procedure very well. This makes it an ideal kit as a first do-it-yourself project, or a nice gift for someone who likes these things. But of course, you can also buy a ready-made version. Once working, it proves to be a very powerful little synth. It sounds very good and the filter has a nice analog lushness. The combination of this filter with paraphonic voices gives a very nice uh, warm uh, chord sound that can be useful for uh, many music productions. It's easy to program the sequencer with the MIDI keyboard and it's also easy to uh, sync it to MIDI or a clock from a modular system. So in all, for a small price, you get a lot of fun and a lot of good sounds. So, what more do you want? Well, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video and if you did, please give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to our videos if you want to see them in the future. See you next time.